Hiya. Hello. Welcome to Geeky Girls Knit and Cross Stitch. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy Stoodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 14th of May, 2020, and this is episode 396. Mm -hmm. um, side note, I was doing my, um, setting up my planner for June, mm -hmm. and um, I always put the number of the episode for on each week's Thursday that we record, and I wrote down episode 400. Ooh. In June, episode 400. And in August, eight years? Uh, our eighth anniversary. Yeah, crazy. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. This, to all our returning viewers, all of you that have been watching for whether it's from the first episode or if you're brand new here today, welcome. Hiya, we're glad to have you. Uh, thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, we are still in stay at home. Um, the Dr. Hubs was able to extend his um, working from home um, for a little while longer, which is really good news because uh, we didn't want him commuting mm -hmm. and everything and being, potentially being exposed. So, um, how school? Sure. Yeah. How many more weeks do you have? Do you know what week you're in? I don't know what week we're in, but I want to say three more class weeks and then a week of finals, but I think only one of my classes has a proper final in finals week. Okay. So like four more weeks after this week? Three and a half. Three, three and, and a half. half. Okay. Well, yeah. You're getting quarantine hair again. Um, the Dr. Hub has helped me cut it, um, but I have not repinked the bangs, and today was a hair washing day, and so I just decided that we're going to do pigtails today with the bangs. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like, you can tell how long it's been <laughs> since I've pinked, and they're faded to kind of this pastel-y pink instead of um, the bright hot pink <laughs> that they usually are. Although I haven't tried it yet, but I did order from um overtone, overtone uh, which is the place where i order my uh conditioner that has the color in it that i use um on my bangs normally they have a new line where they have um developed products colors for people with brown hair hmm. and so i ordered the pink for brown hair in the coloring conditioner instead of the just like the refreshing conditioner I normally use mm -hmm. because my bangs are getting really gray it's it's hard to tell but there's a lot a lot of gray that is growing in on the bangs and I'm interested to see if how that pink for brown hair will work on the brown that's there plus the pink mm -hmm. I plus the gray to maybe hoping that I don't have to keep bleaching yeah and also it's a temporary color versus like the the whole chemical actual dyeing process mm -hmm. that I've been doing. So I'm going to try it. I was tempted to just like cut off the bangs and start regrowing them again from where like the color line is, but they would have made them very short. So mm -hmm. I didn't do that. So, okay. Well, we've now talked about my hair for however long. Um, your hair is there. I guess we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> I know I was saying there's nothing different, so that, there was not much thing to say. Quarantine hair. Um, well, we have a few things to talk about, including I have figured out my stash dash plans. Mm -hmm. um, so we probably should get started. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about what is on her needles. So um, I have something that I'm putting into stash dash hiatus as of yesterday. It's uh, both projects I'm going to talk about today are in my Nerd Bird Makery project bag. Um, and I think we said it last week, but we're, we started linking to um, shops of stuff that were using their stuff, um, like for project bags and needle minders and stitch markers and such, um, just to try to uh, give you their information in case you want to try to support them. I'm just looking where this needle minder is from. Oh, okay. Um, so what I am putting into Stash Dash Hiatus is birthday socks for my bestie's husband. Um, and I'm going to talk about Stash Dash in just a minute to tell you what that is. 
Um, I am using my French vanilla cappuccino sock pattern on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles. And for the yarn, you'll have to go to my project page because there's nine colorways. So sock number one is completely finished. Yeah. I ran out of, uh, I think it was these two colors right here. So the color progression changed a little bit. Uh, but so that one's completely done. And this one is on the final row because for stash dash you get to count the whole thing so let, let's talk about stash dash right quick since um i'm mentioning that stash dash is a um challenge along that um the knit girls started i don't know how many years ago i i can't i don't even know how many years i participated in it for quite a few um and it's for knitting crocheting weaving and spinning and if you finish a project you get to count the entire meterage because uh, they do it in meters um, of the project not just what you complete during the actual event so that is why flower i did all the flowers oh no um so oh, my embroidery kits are so far away i'm sorry um so the reason I didn't finish this is because I want to be able to count all of the uh, meterage because it's a lot, like 300 meters or something. Be meterage. Because he's got big feet, like US 14 or something. Um, so, but I t I've told y'all, I've mentioned it, I think the last couple weeks that I wanted to do stash dash a little differently for myself this year. I'm still going to do knitting, but I'm also going to do a challenge for myself with cross stitch. So, um, this is in my happy notes from the happy planner. And what I've done is I've created a page, uh, with stickers. And then, um, uh, these are the projects that I want to, uh, complete. Well, for knitting, what I want to complete and for, um, cross stitch want to get stitches on. So the challenge for myself for stash dash, which runs from the 22nd of May through the 22nd of August in the Knit Girls group on Ravelry. So for knitting, I'm challenging myself to do 1,500 meters of yarn. Um, so I'll have Jeremy's socks. I'll have my friend Mel's socks that I'm going to show you in just a minute that I've just cast on. I'll have socks for my bestie's oldest son, Noah. Um, I have the inner piece shawl that I've started and I'm at about 75% done. And then I want to get my niece Lola and my nephews Wyatt and Waylon their birthday, their birthday slippers done. Because I made them slippers last year and they loved them and wore them. I asked my sister and she said they wore them all winter. Um, so I want to knit new slippers for them for their birthdays this year. Um, and the, of course then to all of my preemie hats, I didn't even write that down, but, um, all of my weekly preemie hats, I'll be doing a, a preemie hat every single week for knitting. For cross stitch, my challenge for myself is to get 18,000 stitches in on Edinburgh Castle and then 20,000 stitches in on other cross stitch projects. So I want to finish my Christmas list by August the 22nd. So I'm pushing myself up some because I had been saying I wanted to finish it before things by the beginning of November so that I had time to fully finish it before we decorated. So I'm going to challenge myself to finish it by the 22nd of August. Um, I would like to stitch Hildy's Brew and Hildy's Strawberry Patch, which are patterns by my friend Michelle Bindi Stitchy. Um, and I have finished Hildy's Yule. And then these are the other two Hildy patterns. And I have the thing that I want to finish each of them on already. I've already purchased it. So I'd like to get those done. And then I would like to, I don't know if I'll finish them by August 22nd, but um, Dammy picked out three cat patterns um, from a designer that I like. And I want to stitch all three of them for your birthday. Surprise. Three? Three. You picked three. I said I like this one or this one or this one. I didn't mean do all three of them. I'm going to do all three of them. I don't need you. I'm going to. It's They're not very big. They're only like, I want to say like they're under seven by seven inches 
each of them. And I've contacted a fabric dyer and sent her the Etsy listings for the patterns so that she could see them to see, uh, to get her to dye some fabric so that they can be all in the same color fabric. And then I'll have to figure out how I'm going to finish them, finish them uh, for you. So I don't know if I'll get all of your, all three of those done by the end of Stash Dash, but I want to start and work on them. So that's going to be my challenge. 1,500 meters of, of knitting, 18,000 stitches on my Edinburgh Castle, and 20,000 stitches on other cross stitch. Okay. So that is my challenge for, um, for this year. Um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. I mean, already I had it, I figured it up earlier and today is only, I haven't cross stitched at all yet today, but already I have done, not including my Edinburgh Castle stitches, I've done like 3,400 stitches this month. Mm-hmm. And so in 13 days. So I should be able to get 20,000 stitches um, with no problem at all. And there's some really fun challenges coming up um, with with the Semi Sane Stitchers group on Facebook that um, will also give me um, motivation to get stitches done. So, so there is Jeremy Socks. Those will now go into Stash Dash Hiatus. And on May 22nd, I will do the last row in the bind off and I will have all of that meterage very quickly. Um, so since I have put those on hiatus, I have started another pair of socks. And these are going to be for my friend Mel for her birthday in June. And, um, oh, I didn't tell you... This stitch marker on Jeremy's uh, is, this Progress Keeper is um, by Ann Tudor, my ginger kitty. Um, so Mel's doesn't have a stitch marker on it yet, but it will have this um, little glass globe of pink stars uh, from Tilting Planet. So for Mel, I decided to use two colorways of yarn that I've knit other stuff with. Um, but there's not enough left to knit a whole pair of socks. So by taking the two of them together and what I'm going to do is, um, flip flop. So one of them will, the, the, will have the color for the toe heel cuff. And then on the other sock, it'll be the main and the other one vice versa. So I am using, ab I haven't started with this one yet, but abstract fiber, super sock plus in the summit colorway with the yarn tree, silver sparkle sock in the Dr. Donna colorway. <laughs> I remember that. Yep. So that is what I'm using on hers, and I have barely started. I am I am doing the increases for the toe right now. And that is everything on my needles plus my stash stash plans for 2020. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I did finish something, so let's move on to the next segment, and I will show you. And now we're going to talk about her finished project. And that is my uh, weekly preemie hat, which looks really washed out there. That's truer to the color there. This is number 19 for the year, and this is from my free top-down preemie hat pattern that you can find on Ravelry. I did it on US6's 4 mil needles, and the yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in the Conch, which is this one, and Peapod colorway. But that is more true to the color right there. Um... So yeah, I thought they were nice, fun springtime colors. And then you came in and was like watermelon. Watermelon. Which wasn't my intention. It was just spring, but it does kind of look like a watermelon colors. So. Oh, eat that truck waking you up, my little baby. Pink Pearl is sitting on the ottoman right here by us. Is there... No, you kiss me. Um, thank you. She just gave me floss. Um... <laughs> I, I gave it to her because she only needed to do like three stitches in it. So, um, so yeah, there's my preemie hat for this week. I don't know what else to say about it. I have a full bag and I, 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 um, but I kind of want to wait until the pandemic is kind of over before I mail out, uh, hats to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So, um, I may have to start a second bag or get a bigger bag because it's starting to overflow. Okay, um, well, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for 
<laughs> Flaws too. Jingle, jingle. We got musical accompaniment by Pink Pearl there. All right, Dammy, what are you working on? Um, I'm still working on Rapunzel by, uh, the pattern is by Unique Door Sign on Etsy. Um, I only have one color left, and it's her main skin color, which will go in all these white bits. Okay. What, where's your needle minder from? Needle minder is from So Happy Mail Bristol, which is a UK person, obviously. And this bag that I'm keeping it in is from Fat Cat Creates. Yes, that she. Oh, borrowed and from me. Oh yeah, I haven't linked up um, our. Um, what are they called? Snippet snippeties. I don't know. It is from Catty Cross Stitches. And it's got a magnet on it that holds my scissors, and the fabric is felt. I'm um, looking right now um, because uh, favorite shops on Etsy. Is it not? Oh, there it is. Caddy cross stitches. Yes, snippeties. Okay. She doesn't have anything listed right now because she has a supply issue. Which is no good. But they're really great project products and I have, I don't know, four or five of them uh, just throughout different projects. So so you are nearing completion on that. Um, you're waiting still for your embroidery kits to come. Uh, but you may look through um, some books I have and some of the free Be Well and Stitch patterns that I've uploaded to our shared mm -hmm. Google Drive. And maybe do one of those while you're waiting. Yeah. So, so well, we there's some options for something for you to do so that you can keep doing stuff. So, all right, anything else? Oh, I was gonna put in snippeties, so I'll remember to put that in there. Uh, anything else that you're that you want to say about your cross stitch? No. Nope. Pink tried to eat your floss. Yeah. There's a picture of of the contrite cat on social media. Okay, well, let me tell you what I worked on this week. Uh, in my project bag, my uh, knitting is flying away. My project bag from the 805 Stitcher. Um, this is my Christmas list. Get the picture by uh, Silver Creek Samplers. So it's this long list of Christmas stuff. And I... Um, I've completed right here, so I have this much more to go. So I did wrapping presents this week. There we go. I did modify the pattern because um, this present right here, it had this pattern on this side like this, but over here it had the year the pattern was designed, which was 2017, I believe. And I didn't want to really stitch a year into it. So uh, once I, re I didn't realize that's what it was at first. I thought it was just kind of a random thing in it. And then once I realized, I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that. So I, I frogged that and then just made this side be the same as the, the smaller side, which I think is kind of cool. So there is wrapping presents. On a 28 count even weave, I think from Joann's maybe. Um, let's see which snippety I have in here. Uh, this pretty pink flowers. So I probably won't work on this this next week. Uh, I've been taking a week off in between um, on that. Next up in this little, it's actually a Notions pouch, but I'm using it as a project bag for this little project from, uh, from Pearl Girl Buttons. I am working on the third, where's the little book? The third pattern in this little Pusheen cross stitch kit. And this is what the pattern looks like. So I am working on this during the uh, during my Stitch With Me's that release on Mondays. So I've finished the whole outline of the cat. And this little dot right here is part of the, um, the nose. <laughs> but I, when I finished the Stitch With Me and counted the stitches, I think I had like 49 stitches. And I was like, 
that's ridiculous. I'm going to make it an even 50. So I did the one stitch. So, but I am working on this just during uh, the stitch with me. This is on a 14 count Ada that came with the kit with the four colors that came with the kit. Okay, and then next up in my Outlander to bed or to sleep uh, Scottish Thistle um, project bag from Stitch Toolbox. I'm working on Olga by Plum Street Samplers. I'm not doing the alphabet though. I'm just doing the cat, the pumpkins, and the flower. Um, and this is on a 20 count gray Ada. And I'm using the called for colors except for for two of the colors. Well, let me show you. So here's where I'm at. So this um, kind of turquoisey blue wasn't in the pattern, but I'm going to be finishing this on a um, kind of a turquoisey blue uh, mason jar with lights in it. So I wanted to pull in that color. And then I also have a, um, this one right here this color that is going to get brought in and I don't have a whole, whole lot left on this so I, I should have this done by uh, next week's episode um, I've got to finish this pumpkin here there's a little bit in this pumpkin the outside star on this and then the outside star on this and then there's a few stitches and then the um, rest of the flower and then there's a little bit of back stitching for like the whiskers and the vines on the um Hi, on the pumpkins and there's a little bit at the top of the flower a little bit of back stitching so but i love this i've loved working on it this grumpy cat pink sees this yes she's like ooh floss dangly but i really really love how this is coming out and i can't wait to finish it on the jar because i think it's going to be really really pretty and I have my, um, ah, I'm caught. There we go. My Star Wars Bless you. snippety in here. Okay, let's put that floss in there. I'm trying to get it all put away so I don't mess up any of it. And then my final project is in my Winnie the Pooh bag from um, Knit Run Dig. And this is Edinburgh Castle. By Terra Luna Stitchery. And I'm using the Pattern Keeper software on my Kindle Fire 7. On the screen right now, this is where I was last week when we recorded. I was at 4,400 stitches. And here, here is where I am at now. So, uh, these needle minders are both from Top Knot Stitcher, and the Grime Guard is from Crab Shack Stitchery. So, I have finished page one of 60. This, uh, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns, and two, three, four, eight rows of ten uh, was one page. So, I finished page one. Wahoo. I know. Um, so I, I am now at 5,800 stitches out of 265,824 complete, which puts me at 2.182% complete. What? Yeah, I know. I know. Craziness. Imagine so. if you focused solely on this. Do you lose your mind? Probably. <laughs> Um, because to I, y'all know everything else I stitch, I stitch in hand and this is in a Q snap because of how big it is. So I, I hold it kind of like this. I kind of prop the corner on my chest. Um, and, um, I stitch two handed on this. So I push it through using the right hand. No. I put it in using the right hand and pull it out using the left hand and then put it in using the left hand and pull it out using the right hand. So I'm back and forth like so it's a it I think if I worked on it more than doing just I do two um, 10 by 10 squares every day. I think if I did more than that it would um, I would start having 
shoulder pain. Um, just because, and elbow pain just because of how I am holding it. Um, but using it in a Q-snap is the best option just because of the size. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm doing it in 10th stitch, which means I'm only doing one leg instead of the two legs of a traditional cross. And I've used three colors so far. This white and this pale blue and this darker blue. So. Whoop. <laughs> You can see I still have a lot. So my plan is to is to work across in pages. Uh, in so, like I said, a page is eight, ten stitch, ten by ten stitch blocks. So I'm going to work all the way across, and then I'll come back and do the next page of eight. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, but I should have no problem at all getting in the eighteen what did I say, 18,000 stitches on it, mm -hmm. uh, because it, I, in all actuality, since I'm only doing one leg, it actually makes it be like 100 crosses instead of 200 stitches. It's 200 stitch. I'm, I'm doing the clip, doing 200 stitches, but it's equivalent of 100 crosses a day. Um, and I wanted to tell you, so I'm still participating in Simi Sane Stitchers, which is a group on Facebook. And I am doing, um, one of the challenges I'm doing is called background certificates. And I finished one of those this week. So I did 5,110 stitches, uh, which is the number of days it took to carve the sculpture into the granite of Mount Rushmore National Memorial in South Dakota. What's in South Dakota? Only around Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore is in South Dakota. Um, I don't know what else. That's all I know about the Dakotas. Um... And then I'm doing Mapping Your Literary Journey, which I think, um, I might, yes, I might have a book finished next week. I'm looking, let me look at my notes here. Uh, not on that book, but yeah, I will have another book finished next week, which will make three finished books. Mm. So the challenge is you read a book and you stitch 25 stitches for every page in the book. So I finished, uh, I don't have it in here, but I finished two books so far. Uh, and the third one is almost done. And then I'm also participating in um, Around the World, which there are, so they have a, they pick a country. So like right now it's Japan. And there's one part of the challenge is you could is for you to stitch five thousand stitches on anything during the time period of mm -hmm. of the challenge. But then there's also other challenges that relate to the country. Mm -hmm. So you have to be more specific. And I don't have anything that that uh, meets those qualifications. So I'm only doing the five thousand stitches, which I'll be done with today, because I'm using Edinburgh Castle plus all my other stitching on it. And then I'm also participating in Stitchopoly. Mm -hmm. uh, where you're going around a Monopoly board, but it's all been changed to stitching related stuff. So, um, and I think that is everything for floss tube. Um, there's not any, any cross stitch stuff in yummies, but you're welcome to keep watching if you came here just for the cross stitch, uh, because there's lots of other fun things that we're about to talk about. So let's move on to the next segment. <music> And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies. What are yummies, Yummy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. I just realized that I forgot to do something at the beginning of the episode. What? Um, so my friend Robin, who has a floss tube called Lady Robin's, mm -hmm. ha says that it drives her crazy when she can see the top part of your t-shirt, but then she spends the entire time she's watching you trying to figure out what is on the shirt you're wearing. So she's asking us to show her what's on shirts. So this is my Anna Green Gables shirt that Dammy got me for Christmas. Yes, it was. Or your birth? I think it was your birthday. Oh, is it my birthday? It's from like out of, out of print. Yes, it's from outofprint.com. They are really good. I love them. Um, and it was really funny because a friend of mine uh, posted on uh, that her daughter had gotten her something for Mother's Day. And it was actually from out of print. And it's the same Anna Green Gables, but it's on a tote bag. So they, yeah. they use the cover. They find covers of old books. This is the cover of the Puffin in Bloom Illustrated edition of Anna Green Gables. 
So that's what I'm wearing. What is on your shirt? Um, I got a new, a new great comp shirt. It had been pre-worn, but like when I got it, I washed it. Um, because this is the only second official one I have. So it's got the logo on it and it's a size too large for me, but I love it. And if I get on paint crew, I will use it for like painting and stuff. Cool. I love it. I love yes. it. Yes. Great comment. It's a really great show. Um, I'm sad that it's not on Broadway anymore. Release the pro shot. Dave Malloy. Release the pro shot challenge. I don't know what that means. Really, really the professionally shot version of the show. Oh, gotcha. Which, um, that is something that was in the news this week, that the Hamilton, uh, uh, filming of the original Broadway cast that was supposed... So, like, that's a pro shot. Yeah. That was supposed to come out next year in cinemas is coming out on Disney Plus on July the 3rd. I'm very excited. Okay. Those things aren't in our show notes, but they just reminded me and then reminded me and reminded me. So, um, I got more stickers... <laughs> Stickers. This week from the Happy Planner. So they had this special thing for Mother's Day where I believe it was, I think it was $7.99 and free shipping. They would send you a book of mom stickers. And it's mom. got 1,529 stickers in it. I'm not going to show you everything, but it's got stuff like what's for dinner. Oh, I should start from the back because it's easier to flip. Uh, like movie night, family dinner. Uh, packing for vacation, meal planning, um, things to do. Dentist appointment. Birthdays. Me day. Pay bill. Movie night, family day, game night, me time. Uh, Shopping. Pick up the prescriptions and go to the doctor and the dentist. Slice. Exercise. Rx. Uh, chores. You holidays. Said they, you said you weren't going to show them everything. You've I know. shown them enough. Uh, but there is, I'm trying to find, the, there's a really pretty page. Did I pass it already, maybe? Oh, see, you know I use that, because it's got 57 zillion copies. I guess I passed it already. There was one page that I really, really liked. Oh, well, I can't find it now. But anyway, lots and lots and lots of stickers that I will use some of. I won't use all of, but... That's okay. So, um, I don't know if they still have that special going, but um, it was on a happy planner. It was for Mother's Day. So, that is that. Um, you got something in the post this week, too, Dammy. Yes, I got more candles from uh, Recto and Verso, which is an independently run uh, candle company on Etsy. Uh, that do, they, they do literary inspired candles. So, I got one of Emma Woodhouse from... Emma, and the scent is chamomile and candied lemon. It smells really good. I really mm -hmm. like that one. And then they were doing a Jane Austen mystery date thing, mystery date package. Okay. So it came with a candle and then the book that the candle oh, was Oh, I didn't from. see the book. It was just a paperback version. So I got Sense and Sense. I opened the book first because they have like two scents, I think, from each one. Oh, okay. So I opened the book first to try and guess. Then I opened the candle and it was Eleanor Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. And what are the scents on it? Uh, pink Freesia and Seaside Cotton. I really like these ones. So you've gotten some, at least one from them before. Mm -hmm. Scents are really, I'm, I'm, I'm very sensitive to scents. Um, and so the other ones that you've gotten it smells nice, but it's it's too much for me. But these ones are a little lighter, mm -hmm. um, so I really liked liked them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, candles are fun, and that's really cool that they did like a literary mystery date thingy. Mm -hmm. So um, we, of course, like as always, will link up stuff in the show notes, which is at oh geekygirlsknit dot com, so that you can find everything that we've talked about. And if we miss something, just comment, and we will give you we will give you the information mm -hmm. so um okay do we have anything else for yummies no uh the dr hub's birthday was last week yeah after we recorded it was on friday the day the episode came out and you and he went and got takeaway mexican food and cake and i gave him his frankenstein socks and he liked them a lot they're his favorite every time i knit him another pair of socks he tells me that those ones are his favorite they're all mm -hmm. his favorite so um so there was that um, 
Okay, I think that's all I can think of. So let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Bad. What is it, Dammy? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month, so you take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. Yes. Um, and the theme for this month for May is emotions. I just dropped a stitch. Emotions, shapes, and miscellaneous. Mm hmm so, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. Great job, everybody. It's never too late to join in. You take a look at the prompt for the day. Do you know today's prompt? I can look. Hold on. Joy? Yes, joy. Um, you take a picture related to the prompt, interpret it however you wish. We're very cheater friendly on this. Um, you post your photo on Instagram. Make sure in the caption you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad because that's how we find your photos. And yours might get chosen. Um, if you have a private Instagram account, you need to make sure that Dammy, Dammy's Doodles, is following you. Um, just send her a message and she'll follow you because otherwise we can't see your photos. So, and then we can't choose them. So, um, you should join in. It's fun. It's a, good, a fun way to keep me motivated to post mm -hmm. most days on Instagram. Um, and I, I cross post my stuff onto Twitter and Facebook as well. So, um, okay. The only event that we have upcoming, which, you know, we have not heard if it's being canceled or not. Uh, it's still planning to go on for now, um, but with the world how it is, I feel like it probably is going to have to end up getting canceled, which is too bad. But um, the Grazing Hills Fiber Fest in Viola, Idaho on Saturday and Sunday, the 11th and 12th of July. Their website is ghfiberfest.com, and I'll be teaching a continental knitting class on Saturday the 11th from 10 to noon. And that's the only event that we have right now. So, yeah. all right. Well, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. So what are you reading, Dammy? Ah, uh, this is all stuff for school. Um, The Dobi Joatsi by Richard B. Lee. I read the cherry, I read, reread kind of, The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov and Hamlet by Shakespeare because I'm using them for a research paper. I'm waiting for my physical version of Hamlet to come in. I don't know when it's going to. Has mm. it been shipped? I think so. We can check the tracking on it. Yeah. Um, and then I also read the Three Penny Opera, op, the Three Penny Opera by Bertolt Brecht. For your theater history class. Yeah. That would be my assumptions. Anything else that you're reading? From the Glass Scientists, which is a web comic by Sabrina Kachingo. Um, so I assume with all that reading that you're doing for school and not any personal reading at all, uh, but that you are doing, that you are getting in 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I referring to? The April, May, June Rowl Read Along? Yes. So the Read Along Rowl is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day every day. I don't care what you're reading as long as you're reading. Audiobooks do count. Oh, I didn't add the audiobook that I am reading to the show notes. I How need to dare do that. You. I just started it last night. Um, that's it right there. Because I've been waiting for it because I've been on hold for it. So let me just put it down here and that way I can tell you about it. 
Um, so what I am reading, I am still continuing. Oh, I didn't finish talking about the read along. Um, so 15 minutes a day, every day, audiobooks do count. Um, there is a finish line thread in the Ravelry group where you post and then edit each day. Um, the seasonal alongs earns you entries into the year long challenge. Um, and we'll be drawing for three grand prize winners at the beginning of 2021. Uh, all the details are in the show notes and in the Ravelry group. What I am reading. I am still reading um, Fiber Shed, Growing a Movement of Farmers, Fashion Activists, and Makers for a New Textile Economy by Rebecca Burgess. Um, I think I'm around like 40-ish percent done with it now. Um, right now the part I'm reading is... Um, a, more um like science the science kind of part of it mm -hmm. so um i have to take it in smaller chunks um to pro be able to process it but really enjoying it it's very very informative i am continuing to reread the fifth book in the harry potter series by jk rowling harry potter and the order of the phoenix i'm rereading it along with harry potter and the sacred text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. And this week the chapter is Percy and Padfoot. It's the one where um, Percy writes the long letter to Ron about how um, that he needs to get away from Harry and uh, that he should seek out Dolores Umbridge because she's trying to do the changes and nobody is listening to her and she, you know, he should get you know, that whole thing as well as. Um, there's the conversation with Sirius in the fire. Mm -hmm. um, so Swish and Flick broke this up, the chapter up into two parts again. So um, I'll still be, I'll be listening to the second half of the, the uh, chapter podcast stuff next week um, because it's a long, it's a, it's a fairly long chapter. And so they broke it up. Um, I finished reading book five in the Max Revere series by Alison Brennan. Um, she is um, the lead character is an in, uh, investigative journalist. Um, and I don't know, this is the last book in the series that has come out. So I don't know if it's going to, it kind of put it at a good ending. Like um, her mom disappeared when she was, when, when Max was 10. Mm -hmm. And she is able to find out what happened to her mom in this final book that came out. So it ended at a good place. I mean, she could, you know, continue writing more, but it, it ended it at a good spot. So um, I read, finished reading book 21 in the Cat Who dot 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 series by Lillian Jackson Braun. Um, which one was it that I read? I think it was saw stars Ooh. like stars in the sky astronomer cat yeah i think that's the one it was smart to keep you and then i was waiting i i was waiting so our as is much of the the u.s um our library is closed mm -hmm. so i've been reading ebooks um and there's quite a few books that i have like on hold for physical copies when the library reopens um but like some most of many of those are ones that are like I need to read that book before I can continue on to the next book in the series. So I had and then all of my ebooks that I have got on hold hadn't come in yet. So I read a book that I got from the uh, from Amazon um, where they do the thing where if you're a prime member, you get one free book a month mm -hmm. out of their like selection of like six to eight books. And so I read one of those um called Lost Hills. It is, the series is Eve Ronan, and this is the first book in the series by Lee Goldberg. And it's about a female detective that got promoted to homicide from like robbery, I think is where she was working. Um, and she ended up getting promoted very quickly because of a viral video where she, um, she wasn't on duty, but she witnessed a famous, it, this is set in like Hollywood area in California. Um, she witnessed a movie star assaulting um, his girlfriend and, um, and, you know, like 
stopped him and uh, put him under arrest and and they somebody called for the police to come to take him in but it was filmed because hello we all have smartphones now and so it became this like viral video and they like promoted her really quickly so she's a really young detective um so that's that one and then I am rereading book number one in the Lady Astronaut series by Mary Robinette Kowal. Uh, and the reason I'm rereading it, and I'm going to be rereading book number two as well, I've, I'm on the hold list for it, um, because a, um, somebody I follow on Instagram who is a knitter, as well as she works as a, at an independent bookstore, and she started doing like book, uh, kind of like... Um, not, recommendation no like it's it's not a podcast but she talks about books on youtube i don't know what they call it you know like we call it pod you know we've got content pod, creating we've got we've got podcast and we've got floss too i don't know what book people call it so anyway but she um was talking because she gets books ahead of time before they officially come out and the third book in the series is coming out or scheduled to come out in july and so I wanted to reread the first two. But this is a really cool series. So it's set like in the 50s. And um, a like just when the space program is first starting. And a meteorite hits the U.S. and like destroys D.C. and like a whole lot of area. But it turns out that it's an extinction level event. So it's not killing everybody immediately, but over the over the next how many ever years, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and you know people aren't going to be able to survive. So they start trying to figure out if they can get to the moon and be able like to do a moon colony and such. Well, this series is very female centric, and um, one of the main characters in the book, she's a human calculator and works for the space agency doing the math because the I mean it's a very early in computers as well and they're not always correct and they overheat and all everything so they used humans who were very um strong in math to like actually do the calculations but she ha really wants to become an astronaut and so that's what the series is about and she became she becomes known as the lady astronaut um and it kind of forces the she was like a pilot a plane pilot in the war um and it kind of forces the powers that be to consider having letting women become astronauts mm -hmm. so i'm really excited for the new one to come out in july and then the audiobook that i forgot to put on my list because i just started it last night and i had just forgot um is in the charlie davidson series by dorinda jones i just started book six um i'm just in the second chapter she has legs. Leg. And she knows how to use them. That's a commercial. From For what? Pantyhose. Many years ago. I don't remember what brand. She's got legs. Keep talking. I will keep talking. Uh, Charlie Davidson series. So this is about a private investigator who is also the Grim Reaper. Fun. Yep. So... Um, and her love interest is, uh, the son of Satan who has kind of left that behind and trying to live a good life. But yeah, yeah. He was sent to earth to try to destroy the Grim Reaper. No oh, fun. But instead he fell in love with her. No oh, fun. So, um, okay. And that is everything in a very wide spans of topics that we are reading so let's talk about what we're watching do you want to talk about the movie that we watched for the dr hub's birthday oh yeah he was so delighted about it i think he enjoyed it yeah um we watched the live action aladdin so what did you think of it it was okay yeah i mean i remember when they first came out with that they were gonna have will smith be the genie and i was like i don't i don't know I, because they had that like publicity those publicity photos that made you just kind of be like wait what it was very uh, so I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it when I actually watched it but I was I, it actually was pretty good uh, I mean of course Robin Williams will always be genie but uh, I feel like Will Smith brought kind of his own twist to it and um, 
it was fun to sing along. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were, I think there were like a couple of new songs, but, Mm -hmm. um, and there were some, a few changes that they made, but, um, it was, it was fun to, um, to, to watch. So, and then I finished, Ooh, I just dropped another stitch. Goodness gracious. Um, I am, uh, I finished watching series 22 and I started series 23 of Silent Witness, which is a UK show about uh, forensic pathologist. Yes. I said it right the first time this time. Um, and actually, series 23 is the one that just aired earlier this year. So I am, I, I have eight, I think I have eight episodes and I will be completely caught up. Um, so it's kind of like a CSI-ish type show, but um but set in the uk and with forensic pathologist so um but then i also finished watching seasons two and three of 911, which is a show about first responders and 911 operators um and i season three is the one that just finished airing the season finale was just on on monday night hmm. so i am caught up on that and then i started watching the spin-off of that 911 lone star and I think I'm about halfway through the first season. It, it's only got one season so far. Um, so this one is set, obviously, Lone Star in Texas. Um, but, it, I mean, it's it's interesting that they... Um, they The lead character um, is a firefighter from New York who um, his entire station house uh, died in 9-11. And they, we discover in the very first episode of the series that he has lung cancer because of being at Ground Zero. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is he moves to Texas to try to rebuild a station. Who uh, every all but one person from the station died in a really um, tragic fire uh, explosion that happened, um, and so they bring him in to try to rebuild this station. So. Um, do you want to talk about the next couple? Mm, we're watching seasons, re-watching season six of Frasier. Uh, yeah, and Cabin Fever by John Finnemore on YouTube, which is based on Cabin Pressure by John Finnemore, which I am also listening to. Yes, it's a BBC radio comedy that was brilliant, and we love it. Um, we are watching season three of The Masked Singer. We haven't watched last night's episode. I accidentally... I was not looking for it. Got spoiled as to who left, but I didn't see who they are. Good. Okay. I don't want to see. I don't want to know who they are. But I'm who? Wh- how did you accidentally get? I went to open um, a new tab in Chrome on my um, on my phone. Oh, don't do that. To try to go look at look. I was trying to look for something, um, and it popped up like you know like on the main news yeah and it just happened it news. it happened to be there and i saw it and i was like dad it i didn't want to know so i don't know who the person is i just know what character got got revealed last night so but we'll watch it tonight um there's only the episode that we'll watch tonight that we'll watch tonight um brings it down to just three people so i think next week is the final because they always unmask three people on the final so wow um started watching season five of blind spot um the premiere was on and this is the final season for it um reed got killed off so he's not back but they're like oh okay they are in hiding from the fbi um because of Anyway, there's a whole lot, load of things, but um, yeah. So watching the final season of that, um, watching season seven of Blacklist, and the season finale is actually on tomorrow for it. Mm-hmm. Watching season five of Supergirl, and the finale for it is this next week. Um, watching season six of Good Witch. Um, watched the season five finale of Outlander. Holy cow! I have been so impressed this um season with a couple different episodes this one and 
the one where um, Roger got hung um, because of like I don't know if it, is it called the, would it be called the cinematography like the way they did it so in that last one we talked which I've talked about before is they used like black and white silent movie mm-hmm. in it this one they were fl- so um, obviously this show is not safe for children neither is the book series but and I'm not going to go into detail on anything but um, Claire had gotten kidnapped and some bad things happened to her and they like interspersed it with sending it forward to like into the I want to say probably the 1960s and all the people in her life that are with her on in Fraser's Ridge in the past being there in the in the future um and like it was like kind of what kept her going until they were able to she was able to be rescued but it was really cool the way that they interspersed that potential future with what was actually happening so I was very impressed with that. Um, but it was absolutely heart-wrenching. And uh, I think you say her name, Catriona, who plays Claire. Her acting in this episode was just, I don't even have words for it. It, it was so amazing um, and very, very powerful. Um, so Roger, Brianna, and Jimmy, they went through the stones last week, remember? And then we were like, where did they end up? Their their son, Roger and Brianna's son. The baby? Yeah, and Claire's okay. grandson. <laughs> so they went through the stones, and where did they end up? Narnia. That, right where they left from. So Jimmy must have been thinking of, they were think, all thinking of home, and Roger and Brianna were thinking of home in the future, but little Jimmy was thinking of home with... Baby was just... Because he wasn't a baby. So the stones isn't to the baby. So, he, I mean, he's like, he's like toddler age, like probably two or three at the, when, the, when they go through the stones. And so they ended up right back at home where they were meant to be. So, and then, um, okay, I think that's, I put something else in the notes, but I'm not going to talk about it because it's, it's, um, it, it was, there was just a lot of really difficult things in this episode, but it was a very powerful episode. And I'm looking forward to season six whenever they can start filming it and then get it out to us. You know, who knows when they're going to be able to start filming um, with us being all in lockdown right now. So um, a lot of shows had to like cut things short, like, you know, uh, well, like, um, so we're watching season 16 of Whose Line Is It Anyway? But then the Flash season six finale, we watched it last night. And that was not meant to be the finale. There was still a couple more, I think two or three more episodes to go. And it still ended on a cliffhanger, but it was not the cliffhanger they meant to end it on. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't finish filming because of of what's going on. And um, Supergirl will be the same. Um, Blacklist will be the same. So um, they've had to like make some some creative decisions (laughs) because of, of where we're at. Um, and then listening to my favorite murder podcast, listen to it this morning. Um, one of the stories they talked about was, it was a survival story, but it was of this 17 year old girl who, um, it happened in, I want to say either in Chile or Peru. Um, but she finished school and got on a plane with her mother on Christmas Eve to go home and, um, and the plane crashed and um it like broke apart in the air and she fell two miles down from the sky and survived um like the they were talking about like the updraft of the wind helped because it like cushioned and she landed in the jungle and there was like the of course these canopy of trees and vines and such but she walked with so many broken bones and cuts and injuries for 10 days before she was found by someone. Mm -hmm. And her father thought she was dead this entire time. She was the only survivor. Mm -hmm. It was, it was crazy. Um, so listening to that, listening to my CC's faves playlist on Spotify, you're listening to cabin pressure. You already said, uh, random Spotify playlists. Yeah. 
Um, so, and Dammy has both my CC's faves and Dammy's Song of, of Resilience um, playlists on Spotify are linked in the show notes. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, I think that is everything that we are reading, watching, and listening to. So let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> And now we're going to talk about our March, April, May Sheepy Spring Owl. Uh. So this started on the 1st of March and it runs through the 31st of May. It is for any project that you knit, crochet, weave, spin, stitch, or sew that you can convince us is related to spring. There are a couple main rules. The first is that no whips are allowed. Your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of March, then finished no later than the 31st of May. The other main rule is that each project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin must be at least 20 yards. If your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post together with other projects that total 20 yards. Um, for stitching and sewing projects, we leave it up to your best judgment. You can feel free to poly dip in other make-alongs that are going on at the same time. If they fit the rules, that's okay. Thank you so much to all our lovely prize donors who donated the prizes that are on your screens right now. If you want to get closer looks at these prizes or find out where they came from, you can go to our show notes, geekygirlsknit.com, geeky or tune into the first podcast of every month. Or if you'd like to donate one for a future owl, you can PM Java Pearl and Rowry or email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. There is a hashtag if you'd like to post on social media or tag your projects. It is GGKCS Spring 20. The FO thread will be locked on the morning of the 1st of June, and the winners will be drawn for the next podcast after that. And any winners will have 30 days from the day the podcast goes live to claim their prize or they forfeit it. There is a chatter thread on Ravelry where you can chat and where I congratulate people who finish projects, but I also do that here. So, Ddorf4, DG White, DJID, I Now Hour, I Knit Socks 2, Knitter Chow, Lil Angel SG2, Al McCall, Lil Mermaid, Mary Beth 1199, Meditative Crafter, Nicole S, Panushka, Shirley Knits 123, and Yell Cat 2. Great job, everybody. So keep working on those projects, get them finished and posted. You have a little over two weeks to go before this one ends. And um, oh, that's something that we are going to need to do is figure out prizes for the summertime owl. Mm. So we have a big box of pri potential prizes across the room from us. So we will do that and um, get them uh, announced at the end of the month when we announce the summertime owl. Okay, well, I think we are ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of you sh our show where we, where you ask us things and we try to answer them. Hi, Pinky. I got woken up from a nap. Pinky, do you have a really cute video after the credits in this episode? Yes. Uh, She's in her box inside her box. Box, box. Yes. And Bubba's using big words. So, this question, these questions were originally asked and answered in 2015. So, it's from Michelle, who is Zen Knits 130 from Illinois. Cece, how yes. did you fall in love with the color pink? Um, I, I should have, <laughs> see, I see this, I say this every time. I should have gone back and said what I, watched what I said before. Um, that will cloud your judgment. You do it I after. I know. But I can't, I mean, I honestly don't remember how I fell in love with the color pink. It, it, it hasn't always been my favorite color. I mean, like... Forest green. Forest green and maroon were in high school, were my favorite colors. Um, but at some point after the Dr. Hubs and I got married, I just started loving the color pink. And um, it turned into an obsession with me with the pink hair. And we have a cat named Pink. Her <laughs> name was Pink when we adopted her. I mean, it was just meant to be. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just love the color pink. And um, things in our life definitely um, show that because we have a lot of things that are pink. You, stop, stop. You love me the most? 
I do love you the do most. I? Do I? I don't want to eat your hair. Stop it. <laughs> I I'm do love sorry. you the most. You're my favorite pink. What's the other question? Oh, well, we have a question for pink, right? What's your favorite color, pink? The color of blood. The color of pink, they could get my name. The color of the blood of my enemies. No. No. Yes. Okay, Dammy's question is, what is your favorite color and how did you come to like this color? I think I said purple last time, probably. You but... did. Well, because you had purple hair at some point when we have done this podcast. Yeah. Um, but I don't really know. I like lots of colors. I like earth tones. I like soft pastel colors. Um, yeah, I like any colors. You're like one of your cousins. I can't remember if it's, I think it's Wyatt. Rainbow. Who, whose favorite color is rainbow. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do, I mean, I do like a lot of different colors, though. I mean... There's not really a color that I hate. Um, Your ears are soft. But pink is just my favorite. And you're my favorite pink in the whole world. Yeah, I heard you sing. Well, thank you so much to Michelle for that question. Five years ago. Yes. So, pink, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to what? <clears throat> Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Revelry group and we post and post it. Or you can comment on in the comments on YouTube and we will post it into our Ravelry thread. Yes. And answer it. And uh, there hasn't been a single question that we haven't been willing to answer. So ask us anything. You can even ask Pink or the Dr. Hubs questions because... <laughs> That Dr. Hubs has come on and guested on the podcast before and answered questions, so. You have too much hair. She does have a lot of hair. All right, Pink, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. Well, with that, we've made it to the end of the show. Yay! Thanks for watching. Um, we have one reminder uh, Trish at Threads and Twine has given us a coupon code for 15% off um, of your order until the end of the month, until the end of May 2020. So you have just a couple of weeks left to use this. The coupon code, all lowercase, is geeky15, G-E-E-K-Y-1-5. And the link to her shop is in our show notes. Do we have any other announcements? Pink has a fluffy butt. She has a fluffy everything. Um... Okay, well then we would like to say a big thank you, we love you guys, mm -hmm. to everyone who supports the podcast, no matter how it is that you support us. Um, thank you for watching, for commenting, for participating in Owls, uh, the Rowl, um, all kinds of stuff. But especially thank, especially thank you to those of you who support us financially, because unfortunately it does cost money to do a podcast. Um, so if you would like to support us financially, there are three ways you can do that. The main one is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives and you earn rewards based on the level you donate at. Um, we added some new rewards and, and changed things around about a month ago. So, um, if you are interested in learning more about that or would like to sign up, where should they go, Dammy? Patreon.com slash Geeky Girls Knit. What's another way? There's a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you'd like to make a one-time donation. And we are Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you're going to shop on Amazon, if you go to our website first and click on the appropriate Amazon link in the sidebar or at the bottom of the show notes, and then do your shopping as normal, we earn a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you'd be doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Dami, why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's correct. Well, with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. Um, we hope you have a lovely weekend and next week ahead. Um, we hope you're staying um, safe and healthy. And that you're getting to exercise your creative muscles. Mm -hmm. So until we um, see you again, which will be Monday, I will do the new Stitch With Me. And then next Friday will be the new episode coming out. Um, 
check it out on our website or on YouTube or wherever we are online. Um, and until then, happy crafting. Bye. Baba using big words and saying things I don't understand except for I'm a cat in a box in a box. He say words, he say big words. But I just being a cat in a box in a box.